Previously, we have examined the concept of converting time domain data into the frequency domain and why we should do it and generally how to do it. In this video, we want to examine some units used in the vibration industry, particularly the units of G squared per hertz and GRMS. In this particular slide, I have a simple sine wave, and on a simple sine wave, you can see three different possible measurements. The peak amplitude for an acceleration, velocity or displacement, is the greatest value from the position of rest. So on the far right here, we have the rest position to the highest value. That's your peak acceleration in this case. A peak value can also be measured in both the positive and negative direction. And the measurement between the peak positive and the peak negative is called the peak to peak value. So we might speak of this particular test having say a, a 10 G peak value. You might also refer to its peak to peak value. And in a pure sine tone, we can also measure the RMS or the GRMS value. It is simply the peak value measured from the zero position divided by the square root of two, or in other words, 0.707 times this peak value. When the time domain data is converted into frequency domain, a PSD is produced. We've looked at that in a previous video. This average spectrum of random acceleration is displayed with units of G squared per hertz. How are these values of G squared per hertz generated? Well, if we take a time domain data, if we were to calculate its average peak value, for many vibration tests, that mean value is near zero because the vibration occurs equally in the positive and negative directions about a fixed position. So to calculate the average acceleration is essentially meaningless. Therefore, engineers take each acceleration value in the time domain and square these values, making all the negative values to be positive, a negative times a negative is a positive value. So we have that pictured here in all these blue lines representing the peak accelerations now squared. Then the test engineer averages these squared values to obtain the mean squared value. A signal's mean square value measures its average strength or power. But now these mean squared values are divided by the bandwidth of analysis measured in Hertz to display the average energy of the signal at each frequency. Thus we have a PSD, a power spectral density plot. Density, it's certain amount of G squared per hertz. In the vibration industry, since that measured value is generally acceleration, this plot is also labeled as an ASD plot, an acceleration spectral density plot. So that shows us how we get the units G squared per hertz. You can have peak values, you can have peak to peak values. We also in the vibration industry refer to G squared per hertz. But another value that's very meaningful to test engineers is the unit called GRMS. What are GRMS units and how do we obtain them? As I've mentioned already, in a pure sine wave, the RMS value or the GRMS value is the peak value divided by the square root of two, or 0.707 times the peak value. But random vibration is very complicated, and random vibration has no simple relationship between its peak values and its RMS values. 
GRMS literally means the root mean square acceleration of a test. GRMS is a measurement of the overall energy of a particular random vibration test, or you could say the total acceleration content for a random vibration test. And this is a very important metric for test engineers. The GRMS is obtained from the PSD plot by taking the square root of the area under the PSD curve. So here's a PSD. Here is the PSD curve, we'll call it. And we want to find the area under that curve and then square root that answer. Now, since we're dealing with a PSD on a log-log plot, determining the area under the curve involves much more complicated mathematics than a simple area calculation. The point of this video is not to go into the details of this math, but I have given you a link in the bottom right to a, a web page on Vibration Research's website to help understand further this calculation and here's a screenshot of some of the calculations necessary to do this work. Sometimes the GRMS is also referred to in a very generic way as RMS. If you're working in a different field you might calculate for example volts RMS, VRMS. So when you're referring to an RMS value you are referring to if you're dealing with accelerations to the GRMS. On this slide, I show you a NAVMAT test that I was running earlier. A NAVMAT test has this particular PSD. While this can show you the G squared value for every frequency and the general shape where that energy content is in the frequency realm, which is very important, another metric that engineers want to know is the GRMS and a NAVMAT test has a GRMS value of about 6 GRMS. That would be the total area under this particular curve. So hopefully this has helped you understand that there are different units in the vibration industry. G-peak, peak-to-peak values, RMS, G squared per hertz, and the difference between them and how you might find them and why they're important.